I am joined by Tak Ninami. He is a, a CEO of Centauri, one of the world's largest whisk makers, among other drinks. And of course, he's also a member of the CNBC uh, ESG Council, which has been in place now for a year. Tell us about the work over the last year and how has the fact that we're seeing now higher inflation, higher energy prices affected your work on the ESG front? Uh, thank you for inviting me today. A lot of beautiful chart. <laughs> um, yes. Um, uh, we've been uh, tackling how to reduce uh, CO2, um, the how to replenish water as much as we use, and the third factor is the uh, plastics. And uh, everything is uh, challenging. The first one, CO2 emission, uh, we've been doing okay as for scope one and, scope one and two. Mm. But scope three is a huge challenge and more than the, we'd expected. The reason is, supply chain. And the supply chain issue is centered in Asia, including China. For example, we have a lot of businesses in China, but we import a lot of things from China and uh, emerging Asia. Mostly, they are now under the recovery from COVID. Mm -hmm. And look at the Shanghai, 150, 160 ships are waiting because of lockdown. So, Scope three is a, a huge challenge. And during this year, when two years ago, past uh, you know, three years, scope three is uh, the one we have to be more focused on, putting more resources, working with the uh, supply chain players who tend to be uh, farmers, mm -hmm. tend to be uh, uh, SMEs. They don't have enough resources. So we started to provide uh, um, people who have skill sets and the technology. But as for uh, farmers, uh, we started to bring the technology called the uh, um, kind of uh, regenerating uh, 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 agriculture. That's a uh, new technology. But uh, still, there's a huge, huge way for us to improve, to pave the way toward the uh, reduction of CO2. It's a headache. You mentioned a lot of things there, COVID zero policy, inflation, energy. Has this new world that we're living in at the moment just making it tougher to achieve ESG targets? Is it just more complicated to do better on the climate front at the moment? To be honest, much tougher because of the, these complex times. And uh, not because of the uh, Ukraine war, but also uh, U.S.-China tensions, everything is now pushing to us to reconsider what we should do as for climate change. Uh, and like, uh, especially, as I mentioned earlier, scope three, what we can do with the uh, supply chain players. And of course, supply chains is also one of the biggest debates here at Davos at this time around. And being a global business, how are you addressing this problem? Because Supply chains were already complicated during the pandemic, but in the wake of this uh, invasion of Ukraine, it seems the situation is just getting even worse. True, it's worse, but uh, our commitment uh, is uh, unchanged to uh, zero carbon by 2050. Mm -hmm. So more and more, we have to bring technology, what to do with the uh, uh, CO2 emissions uh, from uh, farmers. So. We, bring, we will bring more technology applied to uh, farmers, for example, in Brazil, um, less uh, 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 fertilizer, zero uh, pesticide, no more development of lands for agriculture and increased productivity. We have technology, but uh, we need to work with the other partners as well. So, so much delayed. And my concern is uh, food shortage. That promotes more fertilizer, more pesticide, more development of lands. It's a totally reverse. So I'm so concerned. But it, we corporate cannot resolve these issues immediately. So um, we have to work with the uh, other, even the competitors, cross industry, to work with the what to do with the scope three farmers and the SMEs. But uh, I. 
I'm not optimistic about the um, zero COVID policy of China. People say around the time of the uh, party assembly in fall, uh, zero COVID policy will be much more released. But uh, I doubt it because uh, President Xi believes that uh, um, zero COVID policy is the right thing. So again, uh, we cannot be optimistic about uh, scope three. So um, we are now rescheduling what to do, but we have to keep the uh, zero, co zero uh, uh, carbon by 2050. So it's, it's a huge issue. The zero COVID policy is just not making it easier on, on the supply chain front. And one of the words that I have started to hear a lot here at Davos has been localization, the, you know, the need of uh, changing supply chains, bring them closer to the West. What do you make of that? Is this essentially the end of globalization as we knew it? Well, decoupling is one of the issues we have to be aware of as an important policy. But a lot of ingredients, a lot of food materials, we rely on China. For example, vitamin C. 85% of production of vitamin C globally is from China. And uh, how we can uh, reshore the, I mean, production sites from uh, China to, for example, Vietnam, it takes a lot of time. It costs a lot. So, and then consumers can accept the uh, price hike a lot, probably 10, 20%. So it, it's uh, hard to convince consumers. So decoupling is uh, ideal, but in reality, it takes a lot of time and costs. So we will do it because uh, we over rely on China. Now, let's say gauge 10, two or maybe nine or eight. So reduce the, uh, the risk, but uh, we are not talking 10 to zero, which means uh, we have to rely on China to some extent, which will be still causing a lot of problems of the supply chain. So where are you planning to move these supply chains to? Obviously, you want to decouple more from China, but where are you going to be making new investments? In, in which parts of the world? Uh, emerging uh, Asia, which means ASEAN countries. But uh, we can't do it dynamically, such as uh, tea, leaves, a lot of things uh, still we have to import from China. So, so zero COVID policy, heart of a supply chain issue. Having said that, um, we start to reshore onshore uh, to some extent, but I, it will not resolve entire problems. And when we talk about higher inflation, of course, here you're, and you're selling drinks, how do you look at the market right now? Because essentially people are having to make a lot of sacrifices at the moment. There's a, a real cost of living crisis taking place right now in different parts of the world. Are you expecting your margins to decrease in the coming months? Yeah, it depends on regions. Uh, as for North America, we've been successful in pass on to consumers. But if this continues, our margin will go slip down a little bit. But, uh, we are shifting to the uh, premium and the ultra premium products, which has been so much uh, successful, which means innovation and uh, building the uh, ultra and uh, uh, premium products, I mean brands. That carries a you know, higher gross margin. So shifting a portfolio of products, that is the uh, solution. And then we are asking our clients and the consumers to accept a certain level of the uh, price hike in North America, Europe, to some extent, uh, emerging Asia. But as for Japan, it's quite a difficult, challenging, because over 30 years, Japan was in deflation. All of a sudden, people are, cannot be agilely, I mean, with the agility to accept the price hike. But we are trying to increase prices uh, anyway, even in Japan. Going back to ESG in its core, Quite recently, Elon Musk said that ESG is a scam. Do you agree with him? Well, I don't like the word game. It's good for society. And uh, we sometimes believe unless society gives us a license to operate, which means 
we call growing for good. We grow because uh, good for society. That's why we have been uh, in a uh, 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 big campaign as well as big uh, you know, promotion to replenish water as much as we use, twice as much as you know, uh, we use to return to the nature because we are using the uh, blessings of nature. That is water, that is uh, oxygen, a lot of you know, forests. So we have to return everything to, to, to order the uh, uh, next generation to come. So we, be, we have been uh, focusing on uh, water issue, natural water. So again, we are going to replenish the water which we used, as much as we used, and, uh, and uh, return all the water in, the, in our, our production facilities. By 2030, uh, we are committed to uh, half of the, you know, uh, uh, the water we used uh, in globally. And by 50, we will re replenish all the water we used uh, uh, globally. So that's uh, our commitment for, for the sake of society. Unless we do that, do that we are so afraid that, that we will lose the uh, license to operate. Together with the you know, challenge to climate change, mm -hmm. together with the plastics, by 2030, we will uh, shift all the uh, PET bottles to uh, sustainable bottles by making use of technology, mm -hmm. biotip, bio and uh, recycling technology. So it's a matter of the, uh, whether we can survive or not because we want to be a part of the uh, society based on the multi-stakeholder you know, capitalism. But to some extent, Elon Musk is right in the sense that ESG is complex, the criteria is not crystal clear, and it is very difficult for certain investors to know exactly where they're putting their money, whether they're actually being ESG friendly. Do you agree that ESG has a problem here in its reputation? It needs to work to become essentially more transparent so investors know where they're putting their money. I think the transparency is a key. And there are many rules, but uh, we have to be consistent about uh, transparency based on certain rules. And uh, um, it's, it partially could be a game, but uh, it's, it's a matter to attract a good motivated talent for us. And the people love Suntory because we are transparent, we are progressing toward the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the goals that we pledged. So that means uh, not only the, the simple game, but also you know, people feel that's the right thing. And the company with the right thing should prosper because of the massive power of the people to resolve the social issues. And that strong belief can attract investors. And uh, we relieve, you know, re I mean, we, we, I mean, is any data based on transparency. Sometimes uh, some data mm -hmm. is not good, mm -hmm. such as uh, scope three. We have to be honest uh, based on the transparency. But uh, we propose what we will do to get things better. So not only transparency, but also how honest we are. And uh, we are going to, to resolve the issues. Maybe delayed, like I mentioned about, like uh, scope three, mm -hmm. we are delayed. And we talk about that, but uh, we will provide uh, uh, some kind of solutions. Then that will uh, convince investors and our people, our stakeholders. Good luck with your efforts. Thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Dinan. It was a pleasure speaking with you.